I'm sorry. That's Sparky. And Salty. And Chip. <sighs> Jimmy. We're about to do some slit knot. Oh, we got we have a villager. Who? Where in the world? Our uh, our Viking buddy. Oh, the big homie. How could you forget? Yeah. Where's, where's our shirt, you bum? You owe us a shirt, yeah. sir. I was really hoping we got it because we, we got an engagement tomorrow that would have been really fun to wear our our, our awesome Viking shirt too. But regardless, fuck them. <laughs> um, seriously, uh, one of these videos, I'm gonna have him send me his picture. Actually, I already have it. His picture of where he what he dressed up for his Halloween. <laughs> I told him I'm like, you yeah. look like Ragnar Lovebrook. Ragnar, 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 hey Ragnar. Hey, and he was like, you're kidding me. He's like, look, look at this picture. So I, I hope he doesn't care that I'm posting this. <laughs> look at him. Doesn't he look like him? It looks like Ragnar Lovebrook. He does. It's insane. Uh, okay. Uh, also. Also, well, I was about to announce what we're doing. This this one this one uh, woke up like uh, when normal people wake up. So now I don't have a buddy till you know when I'm up at four or five in the morning. I'll be all by my lonesome. It's fine. I'll just read my Bible. Uh, shout out to the big homie metal Ben. We got the the link right here. Check him out. Um, we'll put the link in the description. Every time we say we're gonna put a link in the description, it never happens. <laughs> Until somebody reminds us, we're literally, us we're literally like we're 0 the for worst. 15. Imagine how great our channel would be if we actually followed through. Yeah, we probably have like <laughs> we probably wouldn't be so small. It's true, we'd probably be full time by now. We'd be full time by but now. But now you're still struggling to work two jobs. Right, because of you. Because and your lack of linkage. <laughs> we just now updated our. Uh, you, I know you guys. We have yeah. We actually have a little shout uh, out to the big homie Luke Thrasher. Yeah. who helped us. Yeah, he's like, hey, can uh, I offer you some constructive criticism? I know Carmen told us that a long time ago. I know. We were I like, know. yes, Carmen, you're so right. And then we yeah. just never did it today. We never did it. Yeah. But Luke said it. I'm She's like, so right. sweet. She's like, they're just losers. Forget. I know, but a name like Luke Thrasher, I didn't want any. I didn't want any business, so I said I'm gonna take care of this right yeah, now. Luke Thrasher, thank you, Luke. <laughs> I was too busy thrashing Dorian on uh, on. Uh, oh man, on Madden. Madden. Yeah, I took it so. Crushing that boy. It's so fun to watch. <laughs> I love asking him, like, what happened? Like, what happened? What happened? Are Dorian? you first? I ask if he's gonna win, and he always is completely confident. Definitely gonna, gonna do it he this time, he, he thinks that he, he's like, I'm definitely, definitely father's equal, he says. I'm definitely father's equal. And okay. then he'll crush him. I'm like, what happened? Destroy his dreams what? in his life. I love it. So that's part of being a father. <laughs> All you guys that don't have kids, you want kids. Yeah. You can fuck him up and mad and make yep. him feel terrible about themselves. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Parents of the year again! Yes. yes! Metal Ben, keep your head up, yep. big homie. Make all videos. You, all you kids and teenagers, you wish we were your parents, huh? <laughs> Metal Ben, make you your don't. make your videos, consistently make them, man. Keep your head up, big boy. Yeah, put your Metal, shit in the description. Metal Ben, uh, yeah, we were watching Metal Ben last night. This is the one where he was in the car. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the big homie. I was curious why he was in the car. I had all these stories I was around. like, yeah, I was like, that's some real different shit. He's in the car. I was like, shout out I'm to the like, big homie. Maybe right. he's got a girl and she doesn't want him to do that channel in the house. She's like, it's I'm actually, trying to sleep. It's actually pretty sad. All and right. then he's like, all right, I'll go do it in the car. You, my meme, forget it. There's lots of things. We're at, we're at four minutes. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'll tell you guys about meme later. Sulfur, slipknot. Nobody even knows what a meme is. It's, it's Sul French for grandma. Is it French for sulfur, slipknot? No. Sulfur, slipknot. Okay, slipknot.
that song before. <laughs> you know what? Neither have I! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> you know what's funny? What? It's like, you always get some detective that goes, you never heard the song before. Then how the fuck were you singing along to it? I know, guys. What, it made a lyric video? A lyric video! You idiot! <laughs> Sometimes the stuff's a bit repetitive, so you know what's coming up next. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot. It was like way back in the day, like early, like two months ago. <laughs> he's like, he's like, huh, these guys claim they've never heard the song. I know, I know. And yet they know every word. <laughs> you know what they'll say, too? They'll be like, why the fuck would I want to watch somebody do a reaction to a song they've already known? I'm like, they're, what are they talking? First of all, they're songs that you know. But the majority of them, I don't know. There's probably, how many songs in the, all the ones we've done? Has there been like one where I'm like, oh, I kind of know this one? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. you don't know the story. And then they're like, how the fuck can you be that age without knowing this song? Right. How did you listen? How could you be over 25 and not have heard yeah. Pink Floyd? Yeah, because a lot of people were playing Pink Floyd in the Bronx, New York. <laughs> At church for me. <laughs> Wasn't happening. A lot of Pink Floyd happening with the yeah. Bloods and the Crips on the fucking train station. <laughs> No. A lot, of, a lot of Pink Floyd. They were just blasting that Pink Floyd in <laughs> no. fucking Eden That's Wall. That's what they had in their boombox. In Eden Wall project. <laughs> Eden, we didn't have boombox. <laughs> you guys didn't? You no. Why? It was well, passed out it was by the It was late 90s. I was just walking around with a big boombox. Oh. I was the 80s. What's wrong with me? <laughs> I thought that you were older than that. You always tell everybody you're in your Weird. 40s. Weird. <laughs> yeah, there we were in the Eden Wall projects listening to uh, Comfortably Numb. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, comfortably right. numb because you just got shot. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Listen to no freaking Pink Floyd in the ghetto. Oh my god. First of all, as soon as we heard the word, that was it. As soon as you hear the name of the band, Pink what? Get the fuck out of here. That's true, Pink, Pink Floyd. Floyd. What the? That is a weird name. <laughs> yeah, you never make it out of the hood with that. No. Yeah, so it's like it's hilarious people and their conspiracy theories. <laughs> You know what? Somebody what? looked at the Emperor thing and said, these two are metalheads. This is a total sham. Really? I was like, how the fuck? I, I couldn't even compute it. And then I was like, oh, because I looked at the title. It says, Christians react to. Oh. So he was thinking that we were actually metalheads and faking to then be we were Christians. Christians. <laughs> no, I, I, I was like confused. So I messaged the brother. I said, what the fuck are you talking about? I've never heard this before. <laughs> Especially recent events considered. Yeah. We've never accused of, we've never been accused of being metalheads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. Oh what did he God. say? Then he just responded back? I I, I don't know because Please I watch should've... a few more videos, you'll know that we're Christian. <laughs> nah, I <laughs> but I was like, now we've heard it all. Yep. That we're undercover metalheads and not Christians at all. Yeah, we're just posing as Christians. Fuck, we figured it out, man. <laughs> How can we know so much about the Christian stuff and not so much about the metal? I, I don't know. That's because we're posers. The other yeah. guy, the other guy's like, you guys are a bunch of posers. You don't know anything about metal. But he's like, you claim you know so much about metal, but you don't know anything about the Four Horsemen. I'm like, well, how did you how did you come to know that we didn't know anything about the Four Horsemen? Could it be that I said I don't know about the Four Horsemen? Anyway, we're digressing. <laughs> I feel I feel just funny today. What do you think of the song? <laughs> well, I wasn't sure what we were talking about because um, when he was saying, like, when he was talking about like waiting to find out if you're right, sit through to know if you're right. So I wait, but I pray that I'm wrong. I, what what does he want to be wrong about? I think it's like standing up for what you believe in, because I think that's a pretty smart. Stay. You don't always know where you stand till you know that you won't. Oh, I run thought that away. was per that was good. That's a good line. I, that was my favorite line, bar none. That that's was definitely my favorite. That's like some like wise shit. That yeah. You, yep. You know, it's kind of like you'll if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for everything. You know, it, yeah. It's kind of like a remix of that to some degree. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Right. I literally heard that saying spoken so many times over the years. I'm not joking you. It was like two days ago, I heard that line in my head and I started thinking of it and for the first time in my life, I understood what it meant. Because I was thinking about, you know, you meet a lot of different people and you know the people that really don't stand for like something because they do. They're, they're, they're wishy-washy all over the place and they won't like stay grounded. Like if, but if you stand for something, then that's it. You're not going to fall for everything that comes. Like there's some people where like they're talking to you, they're one way. They talk to somebody else, they're another way. Talk to somebody else, they're another. You're like, who are you? You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Anyway. Right. Well, I mean, 
not to beat a dead horse, but that's what I appreciate about Chris, aka the metal elitist, because like, <laughs> yeah, he's rough around the edges, but like you know where he stands, and I appreciate that. The postmodern mm -hmm. society we live in, he, 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 you know, it's difficult to try to make something like music objective when it's art. Yeah. Although theoretically, I think it could be done, but. Um, so he, he's, he, he's in a really difficult situation because he's trying to say, look, there's an objective truth here about music, which is extremely difficult, yeah. especially in the metal community. Most people mm -hmm. in the metal community are postmodernist mm -hmm. refugees and they don't even know it. Right. Um, but I, 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 th that's what makes me go, okay, like, yep. I, I, I can fuck with this dude because it's like, okay, because there's so few people who will go there, yeah. who will say this is what I believe and this is the truth and that's it. Because mm -hmm. when he talks, he's like that's it. I know, yeah. <laughs> was it metal, that metalcore video? Yeah. Metalcore! <laughs> and he plays a clip and he goes Both of us were like, wait, like, what? what? the fuck are you talking about, What was bro? wrong with it? I like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I like it. Yeah, he, he played the Bring Me the Horizon. I goes, couldn't wait for him to say why it sucks. Yeah, we were both, like, it was like 4 o'clock in the morning. We're like, okay, so what's the problem? Then we both looking at each other like, wait, <laughs> you didn't and then he has a face like this is self-evident. Yeah. It wasn't to me. No, it wasn't but, like, to me either. He's got like okay, boom. <laughs> this, these are the standards. Yeah. That that you know, you know. I wish you were on IT, our team, bro. I know. Uh, he, he'd, he'd wreck shop. <laughs> he'd probably you know excommunicate us. So. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Again. <Yeah. laughs> um. So so yeah, it's like you know you, you you know it's. I think all of us in this like in, in this age where it's like it's becoming more and more and more difficult to plant your feet on the ground and say this is right this is wrong this is true this is false this is mm -hmm. black this is white yep <clears throat> no you don't get to make up your own truth yeah you don't get to do that you know like yeah that's extremely difficult to do i mean it's easy in our world view and depending on what circles we run in like you know, depending on circles, we can we run in because we can run in multiple circles. Mm -hmm. It's 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 easier or more difficult. Yeah. You know, and so it's like, and that's the thing for us. It's like, okay, Jesus is Jesus is it. Yeah. Like, that's the determining line if you're in or out. Yep. That's where we're at. Yep. Somebody asked, like, are you saying if you don't, are you saying you believe that if somebody doesn't worship Jesus, they go to hell? Remember that in the in the, in the fireside chat? Yes. And I quoted John chapter 8. I said, I didn't say that. Jesus said that. Right. Mm. He said, if you don't believe that I am, you'll die in your sins. Yep. Yep. And what do you want me to do? It's not, it's not, what did, who, what did the guy say? It's not my message to edit. Oh. We don't get to edit the who message. Said that? I forgot. I think it was. <laughs> That's good. You know, it was like, it's not my message to edit. You know, so it's like, you got to have something. But, you know, like, Whatever your view of the world is, like you gotta find some way to put your feet on the ground. And I think you don't always know your, where you stand, so you know that you won't run away. Like, how many things are you willing to compromise? Because that's a difficult thing about living yep. in this world right now. Yep. Because there are things you need to compromise. Yep. Right? Like. But you gotta make sure you're not not always compromising. Like, what are you actually standing for? Right. And then. And it's what like, are the reasons why you're compromising in the places that you're compromising? Right. Sometimes people compromise, like, when I, when I was in Bible college, there was, we were, we had different people were RAs, you know? And um, when we were at our RA What's meeting, an RA? Well, anybody that's been to college, it's like the resident. Well, I'm you know, dumb. The, so. You're basically in charge of the floor. Okay. And you have to make sure that well, every what is resident stand? advisor, I think, or something like that, I'm not okay. really sure. But just, you have, you're in charge of the floor that you're on. So then they would tell you, they'd be like, yo, like, make sure that you're not, like, because there were certain rules that you had to make sure people were following, but there's sometimes that you could be like, okay, you're getting docked this or whatever because if, if they didn't follow the rules. But they're like, make sure that you're not, some people were just like, well, they let everything slide. And they're like, oh, I'm trying to give that person grace and mercy. But it was really that they were afraid of the confrontation. <laughs> and they're like, make sure that you're not like guising it in grace and mercy all because you're just a fearful person and you don't want to have to actually have the confrontation right. with somebody. Some people like confrontation. Yep. And they try to hide it by saying, look, man, like, I'm not gonna... I'm speaking the truth here. I'm speaking the truth. I'm not compromising. Yeah, I'm not a compromise. It's just, you, just, you just have a... a, a an abrasive personality and you yeah, want to Yeah, you have an forward. inordinate desire for jihad. Yeah. And then there's other people who are just like, oh, I'm just so nice. No, you're, you're a coward. Right. That's why. Right. And you, you don't want the fallout. Right. Simple. Like, that's it. 
Like, don't, you know, and, and so, like, this, this is a, but then on the other side, it's like, think about what he's saying, though. Um, my life is undone. I'm a sinner to most, but a sage to some. My gods are untrue. That's an interesting Whoa. line. I'm probably wrong, but I'm better than you. <laughs> I like when people say shit that's like really immature. <laughs> Me too. Like, what does that phrase mean? I'm better than you. Like, you know, because there's a lot of people that believe that they're better than other people, but nobody would ever really come out and say that shit. I, remember, I yeah, am better, better than you. <laughs> I remember people used to say, my dad's better than your dad. Well, sure. Stuff like that. And that we were kids, you know? Or like, it, better than you, like, what does that mean? Better than you at basketball? Better than you at rapping? No, he said he's he's not so much of a sinner as the other guy, I think. No, he said I'm a sinner to most. But a sage to some, and my gods are untrue. But I'm, I'm probably wrong. But I'm better than you. Well, what's he wrong about? That his gods are untrue. So is he wrong that his gods are untrue? Would that then make his gods true? Yeah. Or he's saying that he, he's wrong that he's a sage to some. No, I think he's saying that he's, he's wrong. He's fundamentally wrong, but he's also fundamentally better than the other people. <laughs> and here's how that could be possible, because at least. He's standing for something. Yeah. And the guy who will stand on the ground is and better than the guy that's just a, a, a big bag of jello. Right. Right. I think, that's a, I think that's what he was saying. The longest hours I've had in my life are the ones I went through to know I was right. Oh, to know I was right. Yeah. So I'm safe, but a little outside. I'm going to laugh and I'm buried alive. I think what he's talking about is like... <clears throat> like when you stand your ground, how do you know that you're right? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be proved. You gotta prove that yeah. you're, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you know people are gonna bury you for it. It's interesting because we were having this conversation about these people and they went on their little self righteous jihad, mm -hmm. and then it ended up with people dying. Literally. 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 And like, they're not doing anything. Right. So it's like. Yeah. You know, so it's like, okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like. <clears throat> Yikes. Um, Why does he say I'm going to laugh when I'm buried alive? Though, I can't get past the claustrophobic sound of that, so. Explain it to me. Well, I think he's going to get buried by the people that don't like him for the stance that he took. But he's going to die. He's going to die knowing that he was right. Oh. That he, you know. And, and sometimes, at the end of the day, that's all you have. Okay, I'm going to laugh when I'm buried alive. Right, they're all going to come after him, and they're going to pile on top of him. But yeah. he's going to laugh through it because he's right. he's right. Yeah, okay, I see. You know, and like, in our day and age, when somebody says, I'm right, it, they just sound silly. I know. You know what I'm talking about. I do. I do. Well, a lot of case, you people know, too. In that, in that case, in that situation, he was being silly, but like... Yeah. It, it sounds so foreign to say like, hey, I'm right, you're wrong, mm -hmm. you know, but there's a lot of things that people are wrong about. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, well, I mean, what do you want to do? Like breathing in sulfur. What do you think the point of, I of don't know. Uh, sulfur is? I don't know because sulfur smells so disgusting. So I don't know if it was like that. There's something inside me that feels, though, doesn't smell, like a breathing in sulfur. The other thing is, usually people like hell is sulfur, you know, like they say, right. stuff like that. So I don't know if it's a hell analogy. Well, <clears throat> sulfur is like a, isn't that what God, didn't Zika say God rain down sulfur on Sodom? Or brimstone or something like that, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I didn't know if it had... But it burns and it stinks. Like, have you ever breathed in sulfur? No, I haven't. It, it burns inside and it smells really terrible. I mean, I've smelt it, but I didn't breathe it in. How is that possible? I know that it smells like nastiness, but... Oh, it... yeah, I mean, to ingest something is different. I mean, like, to take a big, you know... Yeah. Yeah. But there's something inside him that feels like he's breathing in sulfur. So there's some nastiness in him that he breathes out, but then he breathes it back in. Mm -hmm. I think something that's rotten and burning so even though he's trying to stand for what's right and he's standing yeah. his ground 
there's still something. And he says something. He did the same thing with purity. He yeah. said, you all stare, but you'll never see. There's something inside me. Yeah. That line. And it's it's there, too. There's something inside me. Yeah. So, like, I think, like, throughout his his own journey, like, he, he, he can't quite put his finger on what's wrong with him. Yeah. Which, which, we have an answer. We do. <laughs> you were born with a sinful nature. So even when you try to stand for what's right, and you are right about that particular thing, there's still trillions of other things wrong with you that you cannot even name. Yep. That's what that's what's happening. I think I, I This mean, is not unsolved mysteries, folks. Well, but but this is what I talk about all the time. Like somebody asked me like, why do you believe the Bible? Yeah. And I said, Well, it's God's word. And of course there, there's this big well. Well, how do you know and what's the proof? And that, those aren't dumb questions. Mm -hmm. And I think they're they're really into those questions. But And I used to be able to go, blah, 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 predictive prophecy, Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, you know, mm -hmm. you know blah, 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 I string them off and, you know, it's fine. It, it's good. I, you know, whatever. That's true, but now you go to the human nature. <laughs> but I said it, it the, ex the <clears throat> yep. deepest, clearest, realest, most honest, accurate, depiction of the human condition yeah. in the world. Whether I'm listening to a brilliant, you know, psychologist like Jordan Peterson or a, um, a, a, a science, a physicist or a genetics yep. person, you know, or an art or, or an artist at the peak of their, they're all kind of like mm -hmm. saying these biblical themes that these dumb Bronze Age Neanderthals put yep. together, and yep. nobody has been able to diagnose the human condition better yep. than those dummies. Yep, I agree. Of course, the irony of the whole thing is that Moses and Paul had more education <laughs> there. Between them, they probably knew eight languages fluently. <laughs> more information in their pinky finger than these these atheists who just who just ran into Sam Harris at uh, on a YouTube right. channel. I was all of a say, sudden, watch a YouTube video. All, all of a sudden, now they're going to deconstruct thousands of years of of, uh, of uh, Western civilization. <laughs> I'm not talking about all atheists, by the way. I'm talking about the silly ones. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what's the difference between a silly atheist and a serious one? It's quite simple. If I like you, you're you're serious. <laughs> Like Alex, shout out to the big homie. <laughs> and if I right. don't like you, you're an idiot dumb butt. If you're a villager, then you're good. <laughs> yeah, if you're in the village, yeah. <laughs> if you're in the village, you're good. Nah, I'm just, I'm just messing. <coughs> Halfway. Uh, yeah, so like, it, it's it's interesting because there does seem to be a theme in his writing where he says there's something, but he can't. Yeah. So there's something like, and it's a very interesting thing about the human condition. Even when you're standing for what's right and you and you will not compromise and you like and there's that feeling of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. There's still in the back of your head like, oh, I feel I'm missing something over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's why I don't base my moral measurement of myself by whether or not I stand for anything. It's not makes that's not what makes me a morally good person or not. Right. The only thing that makes me a moral good person is, is Jesus. Right. And and how much I can reflect him in the world. Mm -hmm. Period. Full stop. For me, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know? And and then when I hear the thing in the back, like, ah, there's something wrong with you. I go, I know. I, I was born a sinner. And there's fucked up shit about me that I don't even know about myself until the circumstances uh, get confronted and right. then bring them out of me. Then I go, oh, that's the problem. But I'm not gonna wait for that. I just say, okay, Jesus died for that, so I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna keep following Jesus. And that's how I do it. I'm still trying to get there. Is that how you do it? No. I'm alone in my island. Yes, I'm sorry. As usual. What do I what do you rate the song? Ah oh, hmm. I wasn't thinking about what I was going to rate it. Probably 8.9. Uh, 8.9. Uh, 8 8.9. Yep. 7.9. The, 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 the musicianship was add to me. It was like... I like his mm. vocals. Yeah, it was one of those things where it was like, Corey's going to take this. You know, like, Corey's going to take it. He's got something to say. Yep. But just musically, I felt like the solo was, nah. 
forgettable. Yeah, it was fun though. The solo? Like, like the headbanging part and stuff. Oh, of the head? Yeah, I mean, it's Slipknot. Yeah. But mu music-wise... I lament that I'll never see them in their, uh... What? In their prime. I mean, I don't know. They're, they're saying that this new record is going to sound like Iowa, and Iowa was their prime. Really? And that's when I saw them. That's when I met Mick. Really? Dude was headbanging hardest in, in the, the front, front row! row. For me, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy, Vin. It's your boy, B. Yacht. Alright. Alright. Oh, that's it. What'd you rate it? I already rated it. What'd you rate it? Eight point Look at the time! How'd you rate it? Eight point nine. Eight seven point nine. Then out. Story out. Gong.